Thank you so much for joining me today on Just Praise Him Radio. I'm your host, Linda Lomax, and my job is to inspire you to a closer walk with Christ. Now here's the show. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and I have Minister Billy Williams on the show again this week. I know y'all be real excited. I got a lot of emails and a lot of comments when he was on here before. Everyone enjoyed everything he taught. I also enjoyed it. I'm learning things from him, too, and I think you'll be really amazed at some of the truths that he shares today. And I'll give his contact information at the end of the podcast. Hello, believers. Welcome to the Just Praise Him radio show. I'm your host, Glenda Lomax, and I have here with me again today, Billy Williams, who is going to thrill and delight you with more testimonies, which I know y'all are going to enjoy. Billy, welcome to the show, and thank you. Well, thank you, Miss Glenda. It's a pleasure to be here, and based upon the topic you've asked me to, to cover today, I just want to do what I'm going to do before I even open up the airwaves. Okay. I want to pray over the people that are listening and my yes. family as well, because I have openly and verbally this morning declared war on the darkness and Satan himself yes. because of the hurt he's put in my life, my family, and the people I see around me. Satan is an evil being that has no authority. But we've got to stop giving him power. Amen. And today we're going to talk about that. But let me open up in prayer. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, I just declare right now the, the authority in your word. I thank you, Father, for the promise, the covenant promise that you would hedge us in safety, that you would protect us, you would provide for us, you would heal us. That, Father, that your word is true from Genesis to Revelation. Father, I thank you for protecting my family. That, Lord, that this day we are entering a new era, a new dimension of faith, a new level. And, Father, the gifts that you've put in me, the things that you've demonstrated and shown to me, the willingness to use me, I thank you, Father God, that we're going to pour out that gift today, and the enemy will have no rebuttal. There's nothing he has to say that will have any power or impact on my life or the lives of those that are listening. Because my disclaimer is, if they're listening to this program now, they're there to be hearing the word of God for their life. That we're going to motivate them. And Lord, you're going to activate the the, the power that's in them. You're going to cause them to know how to release it. Because Lord, miracle signs and wonders are to be the rule of thumb, not the exception. And we decree today a release as they hear the word of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And we're going we're to talk about activating the miraculous, y'all. I want you Billy know, to tell the stories of the people he has prayed for that have been raised from the dead. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. I, uh, and I want to I wanna reiterate as we go through this, you know, it's how do you release that miraculous power? How do you see yeah. signs, wonders, and miracles working in your life, not just for you, but through you. And I want to I wanna kind of clear some air. The first thing you have to decide in your soul is that God is God. You have to decide that he is not a liar, and his word is truth. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16 that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So what you have to realize is the enemy will try to convince you that the word is not true. It'll, he'll try to cast mm-hmm. a shadow of a doubt. He may tell you that that's foolishness because some of the things you read in the scripture will kind of cause you to scratch your head just because of the descriptive words they use. And you have to understand the day and era that they were written in. But if Genesis, the G in Genesis to the N and Amen of Revelation is not the word of God to you, then you need to reevaluate and ask God Mm -hmm. to clear up that stinking thinking Mm -hmm. because it doesn't matter what it doesn't say to you. It's still the word of God because understand this, the enemy will, if he can ever get you 
to doubt or compromise one word in the scripture that we have, then you'll doubt everything when you need it. Because Amen. he is a liar. It is the word of God from Amen. Genesis to Revelation. And then I want you to understand that you have to understand who you are. When the Bible says in Genesis chapter 1 that, that God, or in 1, 2, and 3, when the creation process was taking place, the Bible says that God created man in his image. See, when you look in the mirror, you need to understand you resemble God. God has eyes. God has a mind that he thinks with. He has ears that he hears with. He has a mouth that he speaks with. He has a head that he turns, arms that he embraces us and exalts us with in his hands. He carries us. Uh, he walks through the garden in the, in the cool of the eve with Adam to visit with him and spend time with him. See, you have to understand that you are royalty and you are a child of the most high God. Amen. When you, when you learn those positionals, you will, you will relate to him on another level. Sons and, and daughters of the king. Yes, absolutely. And then when you come into New Testament, John chapter 1, verse 1, the very first thing it says is, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word Amen. was God. Amen. That's reaffirming everything that was written prior to that, from Genesis to, to, to the New Testament. And then Jesus gave them the New Testament by demonstration. He explained who the Father was. He told them how his mannerisms are, his characters. And Jesus always blessed people. The only person that Jesus ever had a problem with, and it, it grieved him, and he not only had a problem with them, he called them vipers. He called them snakes, and those were the religious liars of the day. We're not singling anyone out here. You understand that. But if a man tells me the scripture is not true, if he tells me what it says is false and not for today, he is speaking not for God, but a devil. Because Jesus said, beware of the doctrines of devils. And then you go into John 1 and 14. It says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, understand that, that theology sometimes will tell you that that's talking about Jesus. And you're absolutely correct. That is about Jesus. That is Jesus made flesh when he walked into the scene and showed up in a physical body. But he only came here for a short period of time, and that was to demonstrate what the Father looked like, to show us his love, to show us his power and his anointings and his giftings. And then he get, Jesus went around and did those things. If you follow Jesus' ministry, more of his ministry, two-thirds of his ministry was spent healing broken bodies, setting people free from the oppression of devils. He would heal the blind, he would heal the deaf, he healed the mute, he healed the par paralyzed, he raised the dead, he cast out demons. And you have to understand that when he did it, he was demonstrating. Then when he went to heaven, he sent the power that was in him, he sent it back. On this time, an expanded level where, where the spirit not lived in one man, but can now live in all men. And there's the thing, there are three different uh, baptisms in the word of God. There's the baptism into the body of Christ. That's where you believe on Jesus. You call on the name. Your name's written in the book of life. There is the baptism in water. That's where you go in, submit yourself to the death, burial, and resurrection as Christ was, was buried and raised. It's symbolic of our faith in that. So we do something based upon what we believe. And then in Acts 1.8, it talks about the power of God that comes upon you. You shall be endued with power from on high after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And I want to I wanna just keep telling, telling you that you are your own holdback. If you're not seeing signs and wonders and miracles, then I challenge you to ask yourself, Am I, am I listening to the voice of God when he prompts me to pray for someone? Am I intimidated to speak openly and in public when necessary? 
Well, I have a word for you on that, and the Lord taught it to me. If the devil challenges you in public, you confront him in public. If, Ooh, it's, if, if it's not necessary, it's not necessary. But I assure you, more times than not, Satan's going to call your faith to the table in the eyes of witnesses because he wants to know who you are and who you ain't. He wants to know who you think you are and who you know you are. He's, gonna, he's trying to work you out. See, Jesus said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, I'm going to show you a scripture. And if you go with me to the book of uh, Mark, chapter 16. Verse, verses 15, 16, and 17, and I apologize, I have the wrong place marked in my Bible, but I'm going to, it, it is called the Great Commission, and when Jesus said this, he wasn't asking, he wasn't making requests, what he was doing was speaking to a group of, of his disciples, and he said, now basically he's saying, you've seen I've demonstrated, I've showed you, I've endued you with power on high at this point in the future. But right now, this is the commission. And he said unto them, go into the world, all the world. That means every piece and part of it. That's the part you live in. That's the part you see across the street, down the street, around the block, across the nation and the world. All the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That means every person you meet is a candidate to receive a word from God and a miracle if they need it. It says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. It didn't say maybe, it didn't say might or could be or it's possibility. It said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Those were not requests. Those were, that was the command, the commission with a command. He said, go do this. And now I want to take you over to the uh, Mark chapter 11, verses 23 and 24. If you'll flip over and always use your Bible. Keep your Bible at arm's length. Keep it in your hands or just right there next to you. But wherever you go, take the scripture with you because this is always your, your go-to. Now, in verse 23, Mark 11, 23, it says, For verily I say unto you, this is Jesus talking. He said, I'm telling you, without a doubt, I'm telling you that whoever, now, if you just heard me say that, you fall into whoever. So get that, that he's not talking to me out of your mouth and out of your mind because the devil is a liar. It says, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Okay, now he just told you you have to do something. You got to open your mouth. You got to say something. You got to speak to it. What's your mountain? It might be cancer. It might be leukemia. It might be a, a, a marriage on the rocks. It might be children gone gone haywire, whatever your mountain is, it's come to set itself to, to destroy you, you got to speak to that mountain. Could it be says, financial lack. Absolutely. Lack yeah, a lot of people dealing with that now. Yes. God is the God of prosperity. Mm -hmm. And then it says, not just to say to it, it says, tell it what to do. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith, there you go again, you got to say something, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith, there you go again, you've got to speak. See, God is calling you to put the word to work. It says, therefore I say unto you, what things you desire when you pray, pray is when you, prayer is when you spend time in, in, your, in your closet talking to the Lord and just fellowshipping with him and learning to realize it. That he got, he's a God that wants to save every soul. He's a God that wants to heal every cancer. He's a God that wants to deal with every disease. He's, he's a God that wants to bless us and not curse us. It says, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. It says, now here's another correction for the body of Christ. Because this is to the believers. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Now, that right there is a condition. It doesn't mean that it's a condition you got to 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 be able to pray the word of God. What it is is it's a condition of your heart. 
You see, when you start moving forward in the things of God, you have to learn the principles of the word. So when whenever you start talking to uh, to people and you start sharing the love of God, love always wants to heal. Love always wants to fix things. Love always wants to reconcile and restore things. And when Jesus was walking the earth, he didn't just heal the children of God. He didn't just heal the believers. It says he went into some there was he went into his home hometown in his the process of his ministry. And the Bible says there he could not do many miracles because of their unbelief. They just could not accept him as the Christ and the Savior. You have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Lord and Savior, Savior and Lord of your life. When you realize that he, he has given you the authority to speak on his behalf, when you do the will of the Father, you are authorized to speak on his behalf. Now, miracles are... They should be the rule of thumb. Every man and woman in the body of Christ is equipped to speak miracles into the lives of people. And they will not always be believers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a quick testimony of a, of a man that I had an opportunity to, to teach or do a, a prayer with. And God did a miracle for him. And in the testimony, you'll see that God... He, he wants to fix everything for everybody. And when we walk into a broken life, a lot of times what God is doing is he's shattering that barrier or that wall of protection or separation that a person builds in their own life and in their own mind. Because some people don't like God. I was there for a little while when, when I blamed him for everything, but then he brought himself to me in love and in patience. But this, I shared this with Miss Glenda earlier. I used to work in one of the local chemical plants, and as it turns out, she lives, I guess, now in Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's in Arkansas, and we actually worked in the same chemical industry in the Texas City area where I'm at, at, at in the past. But I was working with a gentleman, and I liked him. I had I have no problem with this gentleman whatsoever. I knew he was as dark as as midnight, but I also realized that the people we meet are no different than I was or you are at one time because we all come out of a darkness somewhere. Yeah. So in in the course of relationship with him, we become friends. Well, I walked went to work one morning and as I was we go through turnstiles, and you can you can see down the entire length of the road where my unit was at. And when I walked in and up on him, he was already at work, and he was having a conniption. He was slinging tools and cussing and spitting and just, I mean, he was in a total rage. So I walked up to him, and I say, can I ask you, what's wrong with you today? I said, you know, you're going to have a stroke or a heart attack or you're going to, you're going to have an issue if you keep letting this kind of fury come out of you. What is the problem? And he went to cussing a gentleman that worked at a convenience store near his home. He had gone to the store. He's a bike rider. So they keep their wallets on a chain in the event they fall out the pocket. So he had scooted down to the to the store on his Harley, went in, bought his his uh, his beer and whatever else he picked up, paid out, went home, and when he turned in the driveway, he immediately realized that he did not have his wallet. So he knew where he was. It just had it. He turned right around, back around, went to the store, confronted the man about it. The man denied having it, said he never pulled it out, and he said, "I knew that to be a lie because I had the receipt in my hand where I paid with the card." And I never leave home without it. He wouldn't have gave me the stuff without that. Well, anyway, he said I, I was furious, and I went home, and and I was just I'm, he said he said things like this. I was trying to figure out how to kill him without anybody knowing he died. Oh wow! And uh, you know, because this is how angry he was wow. because he knew he was lying to him. Yeah. 
So I just said, well, look, look, look. I said, brother, you got to calm down. You're you're in a weird place you don't want to be. You're fixing to stroke out or, or die of your own heart attack. I said, look. I said, can we pray about it? He said, won't do any good. And uh, I said, well, yeah, but what you're doing ain't doing no good either. I said, God is able to do everything. I said, he wants you to forgive this man. I said, let me ask you, can I pray for you? He says, if you think you do any good, I don't care, go ahead. So I say, I, I'm going to ask you one favor, uh, and, and I'm going to call him John Doe. I said, John Doe, I said, I'm going to ask you to do me one favor. I said, I need to ask you to give me one second of grace, one second of forgiving mercy towards the man. And the Lord prompted me to ask him what he thought of Billy Graham. So when I, I mentioned that name to him, this high-pitched, normal tone man fell into the most ungodly growl that I've heard in a while. Or at, at that time, it was the first time I'd ever seen it, a manifestation of a demon. <clears throat> but the minute I asked him what he thought of Billy Graham, this demon manifested in his mouth and said, I hate him with every piece and part of the core of who he is. And I immediately recognized this man was in total consumption by a demon. And it was inside of him because it came out of his mouth. It was in that rage that was in him. See, that was the demon trying to get loose. Rage <coughs> might, have been the, might have been the demon. I've seen rage in somebody before. Absolutely, it's one. a demon. You know, unreleased rage, is uh, that's a dangerous thing. Because it's like a bomb. You just never know what it's going to do or where it's going to actually go in its impact. I once saw somebody in such a rage that the colored part of their irises, the colored part of their eye turned white. Oh, yeah. yeah I haven't seen that. I've seen them turn cherry red on. That's scary. Looked like they painted them red. I hadn't seen them turn Ooh. white in the color part. But I have seen them turn black, just completely black out. But wow. uh, So demonic possession is real. And Jesus has given us authority over them. We can't have, we don't have dominion over the man, but we do have authority over the demon. So I recognize what just came out of him and I stepped back a little bit and I said, okay, here's what we're going to do, John Doe. I said, I'm going to ask you a question and you're going to say yes and we're going to take it from there. Because see, you have to have permission by the, yep. by the, by the tent owner, by the, by the, the, the owner of the vessel, you have to have permission to break through the barriers to get inside. So I say, I need you to say yes when I ask you the question. Will you, if God is willing to forgive him, will you say yes that you forgive him too? He said, I guess yes. And I said, now, Father, I thank you right there. That's the inroad. I thank you, Father, that the authority of God in my life to speak into this man's life for the sake of the covenant that you love him and that you love that other man, whether he stole the wallet or didn't steal the wallet is not even relevant. It's father love for them, love for, for this man and that man. And Lord, we all need Jesus. Now, father, we just thank you for John though receiving a, a healing in his soul, a peace that surpasses understanding to come in and take over. And father, you are able to create that wallet again and restore it to the hands of, of this man, however you see fit. Father, we just praise the, praise the Lord of, of mercy and grace, and we just ask you. And in Jesus' name, let love cover it all. And that was on a Friday afternoon. We, we went to the house. He left out. To, uh, Monday morning, when I come back to work, I looked through the turnstiles. I could see a man about a football field down the road. And he was pacing back and forth across the road like a long-tailed cat in a room full of rockers. So <laughs> when when he looked up and seen me come through the turnstile, he actually broke and ran to where I was at. When he got there, he was shaking and trembling like a leaf in a in a windstorm. Oh, wow. And he got to me and he he started. He said, I, I, "I've got to talk." He said, "I cannot." He said, I can't get it out of my mind. I can't understand it. He said, and, and I've got to tell you what happened. I said, well, tell me. He said, well, you know, you prayed for me, and 
and fr on Friday, and he said, when you walked off, he said, I was still figuring out how to kill this man, and they not know he died because he was so angry. So when he, he said, but when I got home, I went to bed that night with the same plan. How do I kill this man without her? And knowing he died he said but do you know when i when my head touched the pillow he said i forgot all about that man he said all of a sudden i, I couldn't think of anything but a drawer in my house he said billy he said i have a junk drawer in my house that has had, has not been opened in 20 years he said that when I walked in, when I went, when I went to bed and that drawer showed up, he said, I became as angry at the drawer as I was at the man for stealing my wallet. He said, but I, and, I, and the more I laid there, he said, the matter I got. He said, so I fi started figuring out how I'm going to kill the drawer. And, and uh, so he gets, he said, I got out of bed. <laughs> And I stomped down the stairs, and he said, all the way to the to the room, I was cussing that drawer like I was cussing that man. <laughs> he said, when I got to the room, he said, Billy, I had to move boxes and furniture to get to it because it had not been opened in t over 20 years. And he said, all the way through that mess, when I reached down and pulled the handle of that drawer open, he said, my wallet come out of that drawer so hard and fast it hit me in the chest and knocked me flat on my back and i said well way to go lord and i asked him a question i wow. said was everything in it he said way everything was in it i way said go, god lord. even gave you your money That's back awesome. your credit cards to boot so did i lead him to jesus that day no i did not because i was so new in what we were doing what i was doing with the lord that I, I just missed the mark, but you know what? I'm going to tell you this. I didn't miss any mark whatsoever. I showed him what Jesus was willing to do with him and for him when he, he sat there and Jesus. said, I hate him, Billy Graham, because he didn't hate Billy Graham. He hated what Billy Graham stood for. He, yeah, I know what you mean. Yes, the demon hated Billy Graham. And when he reached yes, out hated and Billy God touched his life, he touched him even when he said, I hate him. And see, that's the thing about miracles. When God gives you a miracle, or when a person needs a miracle, the miracle is going to be consumed in the need. You don't live by miracles. We live by faith, right? So God is, the body of Christ gets to a place where they are living in the blessing we walk in the covenant of provision and health that means we come to a place where when it's not working out we turn it over to the lord and we expect him yep. to work it out for us and then when you receive something from the lord what you're doing is you are building a vault or a, a safe deposit box of an anointing because everything God touches is anointed. And it's it's the yoke that destroys. I mean, the, the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing, right? So what you've got to do as believers is reckon. Jesus said this. He said the kingdom is God is near you and it's as near as, as your mouth. You have creative power in your mouth called the word of god you have to recognize that the word is god's business and it's god's business to honor his word it's your business to deliver the word you're, you're not called to do do the miracle you're called to release the miracle because it's done by the spirit of god in you not the flesh on you you see you can't physically do any of it but you can physically speak the word you can speak the word in the in your presence and see it you can speak the word to the other side of the world and it's just as powerful and as quick as it was if it was one foot away from you or one thousand miles away from you there's no distance yes. in the word if you read yes. the story of the the centurion he knew jesus could heal 
he knew that the Lord was willing to heal. And he came to him and he said, Lord, my servant. So you see, you got to pray for those that are under your authority. You got to pray for those people that are in the realm of, of society beneath you. You see, we're not above anyone. But in the, in the, in the levels of life, there are people that are on different levels. And you have to learn that God loves each and every one of us the same. Just because you may be better off than somebody, it doesn't mean you're better than. It just means you're better off because you're in a working relationship with Jesus. And God wants you to understand that if he said it, it is true for you. If I'm talking to you today, I'm telling you, you can speak it and God will do it if you will honor his word. When you come to the place where you recognize that it's not you, it's it's God, and you realize that that fear is the devil uh, shake, got you shaking in your boots because you're going to think, what if not, and what if this? Well, you're right. What if? Well, what if it gets healed? What if the blind can see? What if the person don't die? Why not gamble on God's side of it? as opposed to compromising with death and just giving way to death because death is, is imminent. We're going to die, but some people are, the devil's trying to take them out prematurely. The devil's trying to give them a sickness that they buy into, that they accept it as the will of God. And the doctor says it's terminal. Well, can I tell you that I can qualify that as God is willing to heal them? Because the Bible says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Well, we have to cut it off there for today, but I want to give you Minister Billy Williams contact information for those of you who would like to email him or send him a letter. He loves to hear from you. Uh, his email address is be like in boy dot L dot Williams, all lowercase W I L L I A M S like in Sam zero seven one nine six three at gmail.com. His address, the name of his ministry is Resurrection Ministries International, P.O. Box 268, Texas City, Texas, 77592. Y'all give him a holler. If you enjoy hearing him on the show, let him know. That encourages people uh, when they're teaching the Word of God. And if they helped you in some way, please let him know. He'll appreciate that a lot. And we'll have him on the show again in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in today to Just Praise Him Radio. You can contact me by mail at my new address, JPH Inc., Glenda Lomax, P.O. Box 60, Glencoe, Arkansas, 72539, or by email at jphtoday at gmail.com. JPH is not affiliated with any nonprofit organization, church, or denomination. Have you ever gone through a time in your life where suddenly it just felt like your whole life was falling apart? I call these experiences the wilderness experiences. Wilderness experiences are a time of great uncertainty and change. Uh, there are times when our faith is tried and refined. After many experiences, the Lord spoke to me to write The Wilderness Companion, which is a virtual roadmap through the desert times of your life. Find out why you've been led to the wilderness. Find out what the biggest hindrance is to receiving provision in the wilderness. Find out what the seven temptations of the wilderness are. Drastically cut the time you spend in the wilderness by learning how to partner with the Lord instead of working against Him. Every Christian needs to read The Wilderness Companion. It's by Glenda Lomax, and it's available on Amazon.com or WingsOfProphecy.com. Amazon.com, The Wilderness Companion by Glenda Lomax. Do you know someone suffering from domestic violence or another form of abuse like verbal abuse? Did you know abuse has deep spiritual roots that cause abuse to be attracted to a person throughout their lifetime? 
Now, the Escaping Abuse Study Guide helps you discover and remove those spiritual roots so you won't be an abuse magnet. Get the Escaping Abuse Study Guide or get one for a friend. Available now on Amazon.com. Escaping Abuse Study Guide by Glenda Lomax. Available now on Amazon.com. If you ask anyone you know what the most difficult experience of their life has been, many will answer about a time of betrayal. All those called to walk the narrow path will at some point encounter Judas. How will you respond? Do you know how to recognize Judas when he shows up in your life? Can you keep Judas from bringing destruction to your life and ministry? How can you minimize what Judas cost you? Can you pass the test of absolute betrayal? Get your copy of The Judas Test, available in print and new audiobook, The Judas Test by Glenda Lomax, available now on Amazon.com. Sold out for 30 pieces of silver? In Exodus 21:32, it is the price of a dead slave. In Leviticus 27, 2-7, it is the price of a live one. Jesus was sold for the price of a bondservant. Precious Jesus, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, why did Judas sell his friend out so cheap?